many students have asked me how this update function works so if you remember in graphical convolution if you have an impulse response h say something like this and an input signal x uh, what you can do is you can flip one of them so i'm flipping my signal x and then i align it at, i flip it at time zero and then i i sh uh, with, without any shift i look for any overlapping samples i multiply the overlapping samples sum everything up and that gives me y of zero then i shift everything to the right by one and then i again look for any overlapping samples multiply them together sum everything up and that gives me y one then shift it one more time i've got three overlapping samples and so on so this this goes on as long as we have got overlapping values of x and h so uh, the, the maximum amount of overlap that can happen is is equal to the to the length of the impulse response so since my impulse response h has only n h elements the maximum number of points that can overlap uh, with x uh, would also be n h so i only need to be looking at n h values of x at a, at a particular time so, um, how do we accomplish this flipping and shifting? Uh, so, we create a, a temporary shift register and we call it capital X. So, this, this, this capital X that you see in your program, that is a temporary shift register of size NH. Initially, it's, it's, it's filled with all zeros. So, what you do is you shift all the contents to the right. And then you take the very first sample of x and that moves here in the, in the first empty slot. Then you do simply uh, multiply the corresponding elements. So h of 1 multiplies with x, capital X of 1, h of 2 multiplies with capital X of 2, and so on. And you do these nh multiplies, sum everything up, you get your y0. Then you shift everything that's in there already again to the right. So all these are empty, but still we, we, we still got to shift them. And then this, this particular value, which was here, it, it goes there. So here we see it in the second spot now. And then we look for the next incoming value from X, and that now fills the first spot. The next time we shift everything again, so this first sample, it moves to the third space. The second sample moves to the second space and the new incoming third sample it, it, it's, it's stored at the first position so by by this shifting and inserting at the beginning we are accomplishing this uh, this this flip and shift if, if you look at this program uh, the function update so the, the the last three lines of code these are the these are responsible for doing this shift it's doing x of n equals x of n minus 1 so it's shifting the n minus 1 value into x of n and it's important to note that it's doing so from right to left so if, if, if you are if you're planning to shift an array of numbers to the right the correct way to do is to start from the right you know, to, to take this value, move it there, then take this value and move it in this space. If you start doing it from the left, what will happen is you move this value to the second spot, but by doing so, you've overwritten the value uh, at 2. So now, you don't have anything to move to 3. So, uh, that's why you ought to write a, a reverse loop for, say, n equals nh and then a decrementing loop down to 2. You don't go down to 1 because if, if, if n takes the value 1, you will be copying x of 1, x of 0 into x of 1, which is invalid. So you have to stop at uh, the second last uh, at n equals 2. And then the rest is, is clear, right? So this, this whole piece of code, it, it, it does the shifting to the right operation. And this here, x of 0 equals xx, 
So xx is the most recent value that we are trying to. Uh, it's the value of the of the input signal x at the current time. So we we move this value xx into x of zero. That is the very first part in the buffer. So xx goes in there. So this is all uh, the shifting and flipping going on. And here is the part where we just look for corresponding values and multiply them together. So it's simply doing h of k times x of k for k equals 0 to nh. So it, this part is fairly simple and it computes the current value of y. So it's basically calculating uh, y of n. So if you look at uh, when you call the update function, you're supposed to return this value y that you calculate. And that value y gets stored into y of n. So uh, this this function call it's not very clear. So uh, so when we were doing this, what all did we need? We needed h. Of course, we need h to perform the convolution. Then we need only we need x x, which is the most recent value because the rest of uh, we we are we are just shifting the existing contents of capital X and we only need x x to fill the first part. So we need this double x, we need the h, and we, we could say we need the nh, right? But uh, yeah, h and nh. And this y, this is a, a return value, like I said. y is being calculated, so y will be returned from the function. So it will be something like y is equal to update of h and xx and maybe even nh right now the other thing is that uh, when you want to shift the contents of uh, when you've shifted the contents of x the next time you call the update function it, it will lose all the values because um, if you have a function a you know function f and if i create a variable a equals 10 and if I do a equals a plus 2 or something. So the next time I call the function, it will again start with the value 10. It will, uh, even without this statement, it, it does not keep the old value. So uh, if you look at the FAQ, I suggested two methods to, to preserve the value of xx. So how do you do that? One way is to Instead of this, just do that. Um, so you have your function c o n v three, which calls your update function, right? So inside c o n v three, you create uh, this array capital X with n h elements, and uh, initially just set them all to zeros, right? So capital X is an array with n h elements, everything zero. Then when you call the function update. So alongside xx, h, and nh, we also pass this array x, right? And uh, when this function has finished calculating y, it will return y. And it would have changed the value of x, right? It would have shifted everything that was in x. So we will return the updated value of x also. And then... Uh, this way, the next time you call this function, this value, uh, the, the, the modified value of x gets, uh, you know, returned back to the function. Let's see, another, another issue that students face in this program is that uh, here when you are trying to load in the most recent value of x into xx. So if I go here, so xx is supposed to be the most recent value of x. And and um, in a real world system, x will have an infinite number of elements. It will never stop. But in, in this in the given example, x has a finite length. So after this point, you don't have more samples left. So but this this thing has still got to run, right? 
even after uh, you've crossed over. So what I mean is, uh, say this was the last sample of, of X. This is the whole signal X flipped. And then in the next iteration, you, you, you still want to shift it, but you stop here and it becomes zero from that point onwards. The next time again you shift it, and it's zeros, right? So in here, when you're uh, when you're loading the current value of x into xx, you will have to stop at nx because x only has nx values. And if if n is uh, greater than if n becomes you know if if it if, if n becomes greater than nx plus 1, I mean, it, it depends what you call nx. nx, is it the length of the array x or is it the, or, or let me say, if n becomes greater than length of x, then you simply use xx equals to 0. Otherwise, you just use xx is equal to x of n because this is valid. But when n becomes greater than the length of x, this becomes invalid, so you have to use zeros. So uh, be careful with this. And then, uh, yeah, this is where you initialize the array x, right? So uh, this is the part where you cre create an array capital X with nh elements all set to zero. So this is where you're doing that. Uh, a mistake that many people have made was that uh, they have used small x instead of capital X for the buffer. You cannot have two variables with the same name. X is the input signal, so you have to call the buffer with a different name. And MATLAB is case sensitive, so capital X will be okay. You can you can call it anything. You can call it X buff or any, anything you want. That's fine. Even capital X is okay, but don't use small x because you will end up destroying the first NH values of the input signal. So uh, be careful about that. And then be careful here because uh, N is starting from zero. So you probably want an N plus one here to take care of MATLAB indexing rules. Same thing here. Zero means really a one. And again here, uh, I, I guess you understand what you need to do here. So I hope with all this information you should be able to do this uh, this third program.